Hello Taurus. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitsha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they are feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. And please keep in mind Taurus, as well as Crosswatcher, um, I am going to be only channeling through my higher intuitive self. I'm not using any spirit guides, positive or negative. So this is for those of you that have been in some type of a relationship, could be a situationship, this could have been in the past, maybe even it's currently still happening. Um, so for some of you, you might resonate with this. Depending on the cards, um, there could be a chance that some of you may be mirroring the other person as well. We do exchange energy and we can pick up on the other person's energy. Uh, usually this happens because we are really connected uh, energetically, sensually to this person. Okay. The only time I do channel any um, beings, <laughs> that is at the end of the reading and that is to give you guidance with the help of Archangels Michael, Raphael, as well as Gabriel. Okay. So, let's snap to it. You have here a few feelings and emotions that are a bit rough for this individual. Things have become really awkward between the both of you now. Um, Taurus, so you have here Grief, doubt, creativity, sensuality, ecstasy, abundance, embracing the shadow, power, and under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, you have boundaries. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Taurus, I'm regretting what happened. I'm regretting what I said, what I did. I feel remorse. There is sadness and melancholy. There are certain things that I should have said, but I just never did. I should have done, and I just never took action. And now I grieve. I feel as if I've lost everything. You were that one person that I could always count on. That one individual that always showed me the way, the light. But now it appears that in this darkness, the only light that was there and that is you, is fading. You're fading from my life and I am afraid. For this reason, I have doubts that even any type of attempt might not work. We might not be able to be as one because of the lack of trust, faith, truthfulness, that just doesn't exist here anymore. I do want to create something with you, something that'll be long lasting for the world to see, something that would be beautiful, unique, because you are so sensual. My heart leaps sometimes just thinking about you. You're beautiful, you're gorgeous, you're divine. Everything about you is so attractive. 
so graceful. And it is very alluring. You are very tempting. You don't even have to try and you can still seduce. The feelings that I have for you now have extended beyond my physical sense. I now have a feeling of eternal bliss. My soul feels happy knowing that you're around. There's something about you that makes me feel very complete, spiritually. And I know that certain things may have happened that have caused problems on a materialistic level. But I know that we could be a power couple. We could work together as a team. And I have always admired you and your potential. But I know that money, abundance, materialistic, things that were needed that has also been a problem in this connection and so I keep my distance certain things have happened and you have seen that side of me that side that is very consuming I consume I didn't want you to see that side of me, my bad habits, my bad behaviors, my bad addictions. There's a dark side of me that you never really saw. You never really knew about, but now you do. And I would simply like you to embrace that part of me. Because that is who I am. That is the way I am. That is how I will remain. I do feel that in this connection there's a sense of power. This feeling of power exists because you make me weak in the knees. You make me emotionally vulnerable. You have no idea how tempting you can be. How much you can manipulate me and how much easily influenced I can be. Right now, so much has happened between us that my mind, I'm not in the right state of mind. These boundaries exist, yes, but sometimes I feel that I feel comfort hiding behind these boundaries because I don't know what to do, what to say. Yes, I am grieving. And yes, there is a lot of feelings of being awkward now. The environment has become extremely uncomfortable. But for now, these boundaries still remain. And nothing can change. Because I'm still grieving. All right, Taurus, this was jam-packed. Um, not everybody is going to resonate with this reading. Remember, it's a general love reading for more than 100,000 viewers, maybe even a million. So no, it's not going to resonate with everybody. But a couple of things that I do see that are going to be very strong for the majority of you, 7-2, 72% of you, <laughs> is the fact that there is an issue here with materialistic things, with money, with behaviors, with repetitive things that keep causing problems. But what I'm seeing here, you see this card here, abundance. This is the goddess Hindu Lakshmi. This is the Hindu goddess Lakshmi. This is abundance, meaning more of wealth, prosperity, abundance, that kind of stuff. But then you also have here embracing the shadow. For me, that card talks about the dark side of somebody. Now, when there is this darkness with abundance, that shows me that for some of you out there, there is some type of financial struggle, financial hardship, 
Some of you I'm getting intuitively right now that you may be paying for this individual and they may not actually have a job, but you just do it out of love. And unfortunately that has started to, it's causing a strain on the relationship for some of you. This individual might also feel that you are a bit on the dominating side because you may be earning more or you may be more um, educated than, than them. Power card is here too. Power card for me also talks about dominance. Some of you, even if you are females, in your past life you may have been a male and so you have more masculine energy in this lifetime. Um, this is what I'm seeing with these, with these cards. Um, so the majority of you, it's pretty sad. It's pretty upsetting because something here has happened. And it's a very awkward situation between the both of you right now. And the only way, like, it's not even that. It's not the only way, but there is no way forward right now because you have boundaries. Both of you have boundaries up. Um, this individual has actually put up these boundaries. They don't know how to bring them down. That's a problem. If they could bring them down, then that actually wouldn't be any issue anymore. It would be easy for them to talk to you, to open up to you. But because the boundaries are there and because they're still feeling grief, they haven't gotten over this grief. They just don't feel comfortable. All right, let's have a look at another deck. So I have here, this is the Lover's Path Tarot. So I'm going to have a look at any type of obstacle, any problem that may have occurred in the first place that may have caused this relationship to kind of go downhill. Ace of Stabs, okay. Ace of Stabs. Then we have the Four of Staffs. Okay. So let's have a look at what that is. Ace of staffs and the four of staffs. So, hmm. In the beginning, Taurus, when both of you had started off in this connection, whatever level your connection was at, there was a focus, period, and there was some growth. There was also inspiration that inspired action. And there was this potential of having new opportunities. There was more of this masculine or yang aspect of life, meaning there was more of this, um, this confidence build up, this let's, let's do this, let's start something. This used to be the case, and some of you may realize that it started off great. But then what happened, that momentum changed. There was a shift in the energy. There was a lack of growth and there was a lack of action that this person started taking towards you. There was a lack of creative ideas. Here it talks about difficulties with new ventures or even new relationships. There was a need to focus. This person felt like they were not focusing on certain things that they should have been focusing on. We also have here the Four of Staves. Let's have a look at that. Now, for some of you in the beginning, you may have had this great feeling of starting a new home, accomplishing your goals and working uh, and enjoying with them um, these goals and aspirations that you had. There was also a sense of satisfaction. It also talks about possibly a marriage or domestic partnership could have been there. That could have been a potential. But what happened, Taurus? Now there is a sense of wanting stability. However, there are frustrations and disappointments at home. For a small portion of you, number two, three, 23, this might be a, um, a third party situation. This could possibly be a third party situation just for a few of you. Why I'm saying that here, it's because there's frustrations and disappointments at someone's home. So if you are in a third party kind of situation, that's what this person is going through. They have a lot of issues in their home itself. So that is affecting you. 
that is affecting this relationship. You might not know this, you might not see this. For others of you, this also could be that this person simply has a problem with their own family. Maybe they have some like family trauma, like there's something in their mind that is creating this hesitation. There's clearly a reason here why this person could not grow, did not grow. And for that reason, it's important to just keep that in mind when you are dealing with this individual because there's a lot of hesitation. Even though they want stability, there are other factors that are pushing their way through. Circumstances are changing. Opportunities are changing because of this. Okay. Let's have a look at another set here. This is the beginner's tarot deck. So I'm going to have a look at any plans, actions, or intentions that this individual may have towards you currently. Hmm, the moon card. So definitely this talks about things that were said and done in the dark, meaning behind the scenes. A lack of truth. This talks about betrayal and lies. It also talks about how at some point in time, Taurus, this person gets very emotional. You actually make them quite emotional. They feel emotional and they usually feel like this at night time when they are resting or when they're about to go to sleep. They start to think about you. Now, hmm. we also have here the Fool card. Then we have the King of Pentacles. We have the Six of Wands. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Then we have the Ten of Wands. It's a struggle. The Fool card is definitely this individual wanting to come back into your life. Yes. This person wants to take a leap, a leap of faith. They want to take a, a chance. The only problem, remember, with a fool card is that as soon as this person comes, they may just go away as fast. So you have to be careful because this is somebody who has not thought of the entire situation through. They've not thought of all the scenarios. They haven't thought about the consequences. They're just taking action first and thinking later. That's not the type of person you can be with. No. You can't be with somebody who's so compulsive, impulsive. You can't be with, like that. So even if this person reaches out to you, you have to be the one to make sure that you are going to set the pace and you're going to take it slow. Because if they keep rushing, and if they keep taking, it's only because you keep giving and giving. Here we have also the King of Pentacles. Definitely this person wants to give you stability. It's not like they don't love you. They do love you here. But they want to take care of you. They want to love you. They want to have more stability. They want to have a promising future with you. And so in their heart, I do see here, they want to come back into your life. This is somebody, Taurus, if somebody in your relationship, in your like life, who was romantically attached to you, if they kept their distance from you for a while, and if you have not heard from them, an individual will come back into your life within the next few months, could be a year. I, I don't do timelines, they don't work for me, um, frankly speaking. <laughs> um, but I do see that some point in the, in the future, I do see that, that that's going to happen. This person will want to return to you. Now the problem is they're only going to return when they think the time is right, when they feel comfortable, when they think that, okay, I've been there, done that, I see it, I know it, now I'm going to do it. So there's like no indication when this person might do it. This depends on this individual, how they're feeling about whatever they have invested in, whatever time, energy, effort they've put, they are going to take this at their own pace. We have here also the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands does talk about how this entire situation has become extremely burdensome on this person. But in addition to all of the other burdens, responsibilities, tasks, 
um, chores that this person has to do, you are also another individual within that stack. This person, Taurus, is extremely overwhelmed with many things, not just you, but with other things like frustrations in the home, responsibilities, taking care of a loved one, paying the bills, having more than two or three jobs. Why? Because you can't pay the bills. This person's very overwhelmed. And there's many, many reasons that could be why. But when somebody's overwhelmed, why aren't they dedicating their time to you? I've mentioned this before. If this person only has a small portion that they can share with you of themselves, like 7%, for example, is it really worth it? Are they really going to give you only that small portion of themselves, their time, energy, effort, only that equals up to 7%? No, they won't. Because they know if they want to be with you, they want to be in there 100%. So the reason why they're not really with you right now is because they are truly overwhelmed and they only want to give you the best dedication possible. They don't want to dedicate themselves to you if they can't dedicate themselves to you fully. It's all or nothing. That's what it's like. That's what I'm getting. It's all or nothing. I do see this individual reaching out to you in the far future. I just see that there's also going to be a lot of, I don't want to use the word baggage, but there could be some type of history or past that this person has to also have in their life with them. Um, this could be, you know, whatever type of responsibilities they have, they are unable to let go of those responsibilities and start fresh. Those responsibilities are so strong that they have to have them in their life. It's like an integral part of their life. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty tough. You, you know, it's, it's difficult these days. We meet so many people and everybody has so many things to deal with that it's hard to find right people these days. I know that. And it's not impossible. But everybody has their own reasons for what they do. And everybody thinks that they're right. Let's have a look at what the angels have to say about this. All right. I have here Archangel answer cards. Okay, I just literally got <laughs> a timeline within the next few weeks, or it could be months. I'm just going to do a quick prayer. Okay. We also have here the card, yes, very nice, very positive. Then we have communicate clearly. So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Aha, remember earlier I said within the next few months? There you go. Within the next few months. We have here, you are ready. We have don't stop, A very positive card. Don't stop. Then we have let go. Now that's a loaded one. <laughs> let go is huge. I'll have to go over that with you guys for a bit. All right. Let's see here. I have enough time. Okay. So within the next few weeks, certain things are going to change for you. Yes, you will be able to communicate clearly within the next few months, it says. Now, communicating clearly means be very precise about what you want to talk about, what you want to text. Don't text paragraphs and paragraphs. People have a short attention span. People get lost in the details, especially the masculine energy. So only have about four points maximum, what you want to say, memorize them so that when you get a chance, you can let this person know what's on your mind. Within the next few months, spiritually, emotionally, physically, the angels here are saying that you will be ready to handle any type of situation that's going to be thrown your way. They are telling you 
to stay positive and don't stop giving and receiving love. Keep that good energy flowing. That is extremely important. They are also telling you to let go. Now, how easy is that? <laughs> that is not easy. My experience in recent times, letting go, the best way to do it is to have compassion for the person. To know that, you know what, they're just not in the right mindset right now. They're just not thinking about me because they have other issues in their life. They have other plans. They just don't know any better. It's extremely difficult to let go. But if you are able to forgive and have a sense of compassion, almost literally, it sounds terrible, but to feel compassion and sympathy for this person um, because they just don't know any better. They could have been a better person, but they're not. Why? Because they were not raised like that. They didn't grow up with those type of things. They've had bad experiences. They are who they are now because it's the sum of the parts of all of the experiences in their entire life. This is why they are the way they are. Now for you to let go, some of you might want to, some of you might not be able to. The other meaning for this card, let go, is literally to communicate less with this person. Cut all connection. Don't text them. Definitely don't send them any gifts. Oh my goodness, no like birthday gifts or father day gifts. Like women do this a lot I've seen and it's, it comes off as very desperate and I know why we do it. We're very nurturing, we're loving. But sometimes when you send that to a man, that particular individual doesn't have value for it. They might not even text you back. They don't give a shit because I've seen that in so many countless readings where my ladies are like sending them gifts and the guy cares two shits. He don't care. Don't do that. Don't do that. Only spend your time, energy, and effort if somebody is actually invested in you. Only do it then. There's no reason to go after somebody like that. That's just, you're always going to be chasing that person. Don't do that. Here it talks about letting go. The magic of letting go is pretty, pretty intense, actually. By letting go, and this is going to be a bit longer of a reading now, because I'm going to talk. Letting go... When you are with somebody and you keep giving them so many things, emotions, materialistic things, all that kind of stuff, they get used to you, right? But then if you all of a sudden stop, it's almost as if they have withdrawal symptoms. They will be withdrawing and they'll be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I actually am starting to miss my Taurus. This has never happened before. Why is it all of a sudden that they stop communicating? With this, Taurus, when you let go of a person and you stop contacting them, you have that no contact period, right? What happens is that they will start to miss you because they feel that lack of energy and that lack of attention. Then they start to value you. Once they value you, then it's as if you're worth something. And once you're worth something, then they are afraid of losing you. But they can't feel all of that unless you trigger it. This is why the no contact rule works. I've seen it many times with other people and I've experienced it myself as well. Here we have also be assertive. So what I see with the let go card, some of you just can't let go and some of you are bending over backwards to please this person because you just love them so much. They are saying be assertive. You have to let this person know what your boundaries are, healthy boundaries, what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. Sometimes if they have some type of an opinion, if it's okay to let go of that, don't worry, don't argue about that. But there's sometimes there's certain things, certain standards, your morals, your ethical values. You make sure that they know what your standard is. The angels here are worried because they're saying the main theme here is be assertive. 
you have allowed at some point in time for this person to walk all over you. You have allowed them to be in power over you. How did they get power? Because you gave them that power. You see, going forward, when everything restarts between the both of you, this is the advice the angels are giving you. And that's all, folks. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. And this did seem like a pretty um, intense reading. Like, it's, it's very tense. There's a lot of tension I'm sensing. Like, oh my gosh, like between two people. It's, it's hard. Who is going to start the conversation? That's what I'm getting here. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Remember, you have the grief card first, okay? So the grief card is there. What has to happen in order to move forward? That grief needs to turn into healing. And from healing, then you get wisdom. Wisdom, after that, you get strength. That's when the person comes back into your life. So it is going to take some time. This is a step-by-step -step process. I just wanted to announce that currently I am also doing love readings. Um, they're still open. These are self-assessment readings. So I do tell you um, what it is that your person of interest is currently feeling towards you. And this is a private reading. I have them open right now. Then I tell you what kind of obstacles or concerns or issues that are truly affecting the both of you, but what's in the mind of this person? What do they think that is causing a problem? That'll give you a better understanding to know what to do about the problem. In the end, I also tell you certain feelings and emotions that they're simply hiding from you. The rest of the package, usually I have, it talks about you self-assessing yourself. Have a look at, you know, do I want to be with this person? And it's a whole questionnaire that I created. I did some research on that. I created it myself, however. But it is important that you think about it. Really think about it. Do you want to spend some time waiting for this person? Do you think you just want to call it quits and just move on? That is totally up to you. But the reason why I did this written report kind of um, package, it's because I get to do it faster for you guys. Um, that way I'm actually not always closed. I know everybody's like, oh, you're out of stock, you're out of stock. But many of you know I also I have a, a day job as well, right? So I do this uh, whenever I can. So I was hoping that I can help more people by at least providing you, you know, the essentials and then you can make your judgment accordingly uh, to the results of those cards. Okay, Taurus, thank you all for your encouragement for your support. I will see you all again. And definitely um, for some of you that may feel you have different scenarios in your relationships, um, like on and off, I have some videos that are on the other channel, Asnoitia Audio. Have a look at that. Sometimes they may provide you with some clarity. I will be posting hopefully some more soon. All right then. You all take care. Stay safe. Bye now.